So I want everyone in here to imagine their future customer. And as soon as they walk into your store, they're greeted by their own dietitian, their own pharmacist, and their own personal shopper. And the best part about each one of these employees is they know your customers inside and out. They know their likes, their dislikes, and best of all, they can predict what they're gonna purchase in the future. And you can do this by combining data and artificial intelligence. Now, I'm Billy Brink with Ralph's Grocery Company. This is Zach Curhan with Niagara Bottling, Lonnie Weber with Fred Meyer Stores, Lizette Gonzalez with Northgate Market, and Hugo Quimbala with Bimbo Bakeries. And together, we are the age of you. And what we want to do today is talk to you about four different things. First, we want to talk to you about the benefits of a personalized and predictive shopping experience. Second, we want to talk to you about your future customer and why you need to make a change. Third, we're going to tell you how you can combine data and artificial intelligence. And lastly, we want to give you our recommendations. And at the end of our presentation, we're going to ask one very important thing of you. We're going to ask that you commit the necessary resources and invest in an infrastructure of data and artificial intelligence and give each individual customer a personalized and predictive shopping experience. And by doing this, you will not only have put your customers first, but in the process, you will have built the single most powerful individual marketing plan in retail history. So what are the benefits to the consumers? Well, it comes down to three different areas. First, it's predictive. And it can actually do the, the, can actually do the shopping for each one of your customers. By looking at past purchases, how often they buy items, and their social needs, it can put together a shopping list and either have it mailed directly to the customer's house or ready for pickup in the store. Second, it's a personal assistant. By combining store data, personal data, and transaction data, it can answer questions for the customers as they walk through the store. If they need a recommendation on a bottle of wine, it can give them the perfect recommendation based on their past purchases and the event they're going to. If they want to change their diet, it can do that as well. Say they want to go gluten-free, maybe train Atkins diet. By looking at their past purchases, it can recommend which items to switch out. And the last benefit to the customer is it has the ability to give them the best prices on the items they buy the most. Now to do this, I want to show you and introduce to you two people that are very important to me. Christy up there, she's my mom. And by looking at her transaction data, you realize that she only shops in your store when you have drinkable yogurts on sale. And she typically buys five to 10 yogurts. Well, the reason for this is she watches my kids, she watches my brother's kids, and she watches my 95-year-old grandmother. And each one of these groups loves drinkable yogurts. And by giving my mom an everyday personalized price on yogurt, you can ensure she does all of her shopping at your location. The next person up there is Jennifer. She's my neighbor, and she really truly is a platinum shopper. She typically spends $100 every trip and usually shops two to three times a week. Now, when you look at her transactional data, you see she typically buys 15 to 20 avocados, and she's only in your store when you have them on sale. Now, what you don't know about Jennifer is, is that she's a caterer and her staple item is an avocado smoothie. By giving her an everyday low price that's personalized for her, you could ensure she does all of her shopping at your location. So what are the benefits to the food industry? Well, it really comes down to one very important item, and that's sales. And you could increase your sales in three different ways. Number one is by discounting. Anytime you lower prices, 
you typically drive sales in your location. And by using, utilizing personalized pricing, you can give each customer in your store the best prices on the items they buy the most. The second way to increase sales is through bundling and recommendations. And being personalized and predictive is a perfect way to accomplish this. But the last way to increase your sales, and probably the most powerful, is by becoming that next hot thing and driving foot traffic in your stores. Companies like Google, Amazon, or even some of the natural merchants in this room today have seen a significant sales increase over the last five years. The reason, the reason for that is you identified what the customers were looking for. You gave them what you need, and you became that next hot item. By giving customers a personalized and predictive shopping experience, you can do that again. You can give them what they're looking for, drive foot traffic in your stores, and increase your sales. Now to talk about our future customer, I'm gonna pass it to Lizette. Who are the shoppers of tomorrow? They're Generation Z and were born after 1995. They're the most ethnically diverse and they speak multiple languages. They're hyper-connected and they've been so since birth. They're easily bored and are constantly looking for the next hot item. They're the new me generation or age of you generation. So with them, you not only have to be relevant, but super relevant. Super relevancy allows you to cater to individuals at the right time. Did you know that 85% of customers said they prefer to shop at stores that offer them personalized coupons and promotions? So you're going to have multiple generations and multiple cultures shopping at your stores. So how will you personalize your shopping experience? You can do this by having predictive data that will allow you to cater to them and only them. So how do we prevent what happened to the fashion mall from happening to us? How do we out Amazon? Amazon? We do this by giving our customers a reason to shop at our stores. Amazon may know what our customers buy online, but they do not truly know our customers. They would have never known that Billy's neighbor is a caterer and her shopping trip depends on who has the cheapest avocados. You need to start using your data in a way that will be, allow you to be super relevant and provide a personalized predictive shopping experience for your customers and that will allow you to cement that relationship for a lifetime. I mentioned the reasons to make the change, and data is one way. And now Ugo will provide us with examples of how you too can be the next hot item. Our organizations, both CPG and retail, are doing an excellent job in collecting data, mostly from our interactions with our customers every day. Then we process our data, either in-house or due to our core competences, through third-party companies. We get the reports, and then we create offerings for them. Let's picture a store with 30,000 customers. Normally, we divide our customers in, let's say, six or seven segments, create offerings for them, and then um, probably coupons, discounts. We even have adapted our stores for these segments creating organic foods, sections, even gluten-free. When, let's, let's, let's move and see Amazon. Think about Amazon. Amazon, they are also collecting data. They are also doing offerings. In fact, when I started this program, I was getting tired of eating sandwiches. So I, I went to Amazon, and I was looking for this cooking book. And at the same time, Amazon was offering me a better book. It was offering me utensils, even spices for those recipes. That information was somewhat relevant for me at that point. When we discuss about super relevant data, we can talk about Sephora. Sephora is a, this cosmetics company that sends personalized promotions to their customers based on their skin type, skin color, even the brands they like the most. All of this based on past purchases and also personalized information. 
Can we, and, and something interesting, Sephora, or Sephora has many ways to communicate with our customers. One of them is through emails. And about 91% of Sephora's customers open their emails. Why? Because they know that they're receiving super relevant information. Now, can we imagine if in our industry we were able to, co to send communications to our customers and about 91% of them anxiously waiting for those communications? At that point, in our 30,000 customer store, we have divided it into 30,000 segments and have provided them with super relevant information. As I mentioned before, we're doing an excellent job in collecting data. This is not going to stop. On the contrary, it's going to grow as more things get connected and uh, social media attracts more followers. So this is, this is going to make data increase exponentially to the point that new terms are being all the time created to try to measure this, this extensive amount of data. We are at the beginning of a new industrial revolution. In this industrial revolution, data is going to be like the fuel continuously accumulating and ready to move this wonderful machine called artificial intelligence. And Lani is gonna talk about artificial intelligence. So as, we, as we've just heard, our industry is experiencing a huge explosion in this volume of data that's being created. It's a veritable gold rush. There's lots of valuable assets within that data, and it will be what separates us from our competitors online. When we can take our, unstructured, or our, our structured data, transactional data, combine it with social data from Yelp, Facebook, Twitter, wearables, sensors, we will create super relevant data or that convergence of who and when. Now, I talked about the gold rush. The data itself is not the gold, but the gold is the discovery within the data. It's about the speed at which our industry can take this super relevant data, form real-time insights, and take action to provide that more personalized predictive shopping experience. Artificial intelligence and artificially intelligent platforms will be the engines that utilize this fuel to provide for these better discoveries. Now, artificial intelligence has its beginnings in World War II when Professor Alan Turing created a machine that broke the German Enigma code, and by some accounts, shortened the duration of World War II by two years. Now fast forward to 2011, IBM created Watson, a supercomputer which competed on the TV show Jeopardy against two former champions and beat them both to take home the $1 million prize. This evolution of humans and machines was best explained to our group in an analogy given to us by USC professor of clinical data sciences, Dr. Arif Ansari, when he told us, we started out as scribblers, we then became writers, clickers, flickers, blinkers, and now thinkers. When IBM's Watson beat those two champions in 2011, it was a room full of servers. Today, that same processing power can be held in the palm of our hands. That's technological evolution, and that will lead us to better discoveries about our customers' needs. So we've collected this super relevant data. It's been organized, and it will be the foundation upon which customer experience will be built. And here's the best part. For our industry, as we develop and leverage this resource, competitive advantage. These platforms that they use utilize techniques called machine learning, deep learning, cognitive computing. They're really the engines that drive data science and analytics. They take this super relevant data, they take it in, they turn it over using the algorithms, and spit out an answer in the form of insights. 
These insights, or these algorithms, have the ability to learn with each successive input of data. And they do the part of data analytics that's most difficult to explain and is why it's sometimes referred to as a black box. Great example of this black box is Google and their search function. It's the reason you enter the search term corn dog and get 170 million results in 0.29 seconds. It's a black box because you don't know how it's done. You just know that it gets done. This is what it looks like inside of that black box. Pretty difficult to explain, but there are people and there are partners who can explain these complex algorithms that lead to better insights about our customers and lead us to this predictive personalized experience. So what does this cost? Well, it really depends upon the organization, but what I can tell you is a McKinsey report from earlier this year stated that big data investments amounted to about 0.6% of revenues in the companies they studied and led to 140% return on that investment in one year. So how are we as an industry going to leverage this secret ingredient each one of you possess? Zach's going to go over some recommendations. So we discussed today with everyone here about our future customer and how data and technology can provide a personalized experience for each of your customers. So what solutions can you implement today that prepare for the future? Well, based on our research and interviews with the IBM Watson team and conversations with industry experts, we have the following recommendations. It really starts with having super relevant data. You need to combine your transactional data from your shoppers with social media data to discover super relevant information for all of your customers. Now, there are customers, there are companies out there that can help you provide this real time and historical information from all across the web to help power your business. Now, having all this data is great, but you still need someone to analyze it, make it predictable and useful. We understand that a lot of your organizations out, out here today currently have data scientists and data analysts. But in order to leapfrog ahead, you need to find this data scientist unicorn. This unique individual not only knows your business from inside out, but they can translate the data, mine the data, build these algor algorithms, and connect the dots that add value to your bottom line. So where do you find these unicorns? Well, there are companies out there who can help, but we found that companies like Amazon and Facebook have been using a company called Kaggle to help them find their top data scientists. This company is an online platform that posts complex data-driven problems on the web and allows top data scientists to compete with one another to solve these problems. Think of this platform as a crowdsourcing tool for your companies to find the next top data scientist. Lastly, we talked about how the world is changing. In the next 10 years, you're going to have a plethora of data. You won't be able to hire a large enough team to analyze all this information. Let's be honest. Our industry is great at many things, but we are behind in technology. Let's stick with our core competencies, and let's leverage with a predictive technology, and let's bring this in-house. Again. We understand that a lot of organizations out, there, out here today currently are building these platforms or have these platforms. That's great. But you still need to reach out to one of these 37 companies and get a second opinion. For those who don't have these platforms, you need to reach out to these companies today. Schedule that meeting. Start building these platforms and prepare for the future. So if you combine these three solutions, You'll be well on your way to create a personalized and predictive shopping experience and a sustainable competitive advantage for years ahead. Now, be bold and brave enough to invest in this infrastructure today to create the single most effective target marketing in the history of the world. Thank you for your time today. We will now open up the floor for questions.
first of all, great job, um, very inspiring. Uh, and w while you're presenting, what I'm thinking about is all of us in this room spending the time we do on paper ads and <laughs> what it will look like in the future. Um, and I think you've hit the nail on the head. What we know today, we won't know tomorrow. Um, and uh, have you looked at how you said 140% return on investment? That 140%, where does that fall? Is it in is it is it in the production of advertising? Is it the you know uh, sales? How do you break that 140% return on investment? It was broken down into. Um, lower operational costs and increase pi pricing power as you're as you're targeting those ads to those customers. You're you're growing that that top line, and that's where that return on investment is really seen in that first year. And it, the, the the report showed a 200% return on investment over five years, due to those lower operating costs and and increased pricing power with the targeting. Great presentation. Um, no doubt that data will help us to run our businesses in the future. But the one thing that comes to mind for me is, as a grocery retailer, a lot of our business is based on human interaction. So how do you see the balance between this data mining and using this to attract customers with the human interaction that we've spent so many years developing to have loyal customers? Well, I think you're still going to have that human element. And when we kind of talked about that personalized experience, and I could think of it as when I was a store manager, one of the complaints that I always had is there was never enough employees on the sales floor. So we're not saying you're going to eliminate that piece. You're still going to have that in your stores. And that's why we didn't really talk about the labor savings, is we understand how important it is to have those customers in your store. But the reality is, and I can look in this store right now or even look at my own company, not every store has a wine steward. Very few stores have a dietitian. And by implementing uh, uh, artificial intelligence and data kind of give that customer what they're looking for is an added benefit on top of the great service we're already giving our customers. So um, my question is, we, you, as you explained, many industries have already, are leveraging all these technologies. So what I wanted to ask you is from your perspective and your research, what is keeping our industry, uh, the food industry, either from a manufacturer or a retailer perspective, from fully leveraging all of these, te all of these technologies, all of this information? Honestly, I, I think the biggest thing is just changing the mindset of, of the way we look at our business. I mean, we've been around for hundreds of years, and we've always run a paper ad, and we've been very, very successful doing that. I mean, some of the largest companies in America are sitting in this room right now. But when we ran the numbers, it was cheaper than running paper ads and some of the other items that we looked at. So we honestly think it's just changing the way we view our customers and just better preparing for that future customer and the way that they're going to shop. You look at the youngest generation right now. I can look at my kids. My seven-year-old knows how to use an iPad better than I do. And I can only imagine what she's going to expect when she shops at a grocery store in the future. Great job by all of you. I'm curious, how do you see the evolution of household data, which is what we have mostly today, to individualized data? So, uh, you know, I can look, my family puts in my loyalty rewards number at the house, at the register, but my daughter is clearly shopping differently utilizing that number than my wife or I are shopping. So how do you see the movement from household data to individualized data? I think that's where the allure of combining that, what they would consider structured data or the transactional household data with that unstructured data, which is everything that's coming in and, and, and is being formed instantaneously in real time through YouTube video, um, you know, those social media posts on Instagram, Yelp. How do we how do we combine and act on that to create those insights that are highly individualized? And I think that's the, the, the trick and the secret 
um, that really needs to be pursued is how do we integrate and aggregate all of that data to perform or, or, or to create insights that are highly individualized and personalized. And I think that's where our, our answer is going to come from is we can take that, um, all of that vast social data that's, that's out there.